Watch KSTV weeknights at 7.30 and 11 Eastern and anytime with Inside On Demand on Channel 103. Now the eyes of the basketball world have focused in on Las Vegas this week as Team USA trains for the London Olympics. And former Kentucky big man DeMarcus Cousins has factored heavily into the conversation for a variety of reasons. Joining us on the phone now from Vegas to discuss Boogie's Team USA trip is Sean Cunningham from Sacramento's News 10. Sean, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How's everything? Good. Now, we were just talking, DeMarcus Cousins is keeping things interesting for you this week. It all started with, of course, Jerry Colangelo's comment saying that if, if he wants to have a future on the team, uh, he needs to mature a little bit, which is not maybe something new that we've heard about DeMarcus, but it caught him off guard. Yesterday, DeMarcus confronted him about it. Can you take us through that situation? Yeah, it's, it's been a little interesting. I mean, luckily, like you said, DeMarcus has kept it interesting for people down here. Um, first of all, day one opens up, and that was probably the most media access we've really had uh, during the time of Team USA's camp with the select team. And DeMarcus, of course, wanting to make that impression. Um, he said he wanted to come out and get a buzz going around him. And, of course, on the first day, true to his NBA self, he, uh, put, he, he created that buzz, being very, very physical. Um, leaving an impression, especially over the eye of DeAndre Iguodala, who caught him with an elbow. Um, he shoved James Harden. He said there was almost a fight out there. Um, he wanted to keep it physical, and he fouled a lot of fun of us. He kept fouling as Carmelo Anthony. Uh, he, as he said on the, on, on the after day one, that DeMarcus couldn't keep himself out of foul trouble, and he was fouling the bleep out of everybody. Um, so he certainly made that impression. He was physical. Since then, um, he, he, he wanted to keep that impression with Team USA and, and, and leave that lasting impression that he can come out here and play in the international game and do exactly what they wanted him to do. Now, since after that, he didn't make the 12-man roster for the Olympic team. He was disappointed by that. He didn't speak to the media on Saturday, on Saturday the, day, um, after he, the day he found out that he wasn't going to be on the team. He didn't, find out, he didn't speak to the media on Sunday either. And then he comes out yesterday, um, and he had never had a face-to-face -face meeting with Jerry Colangelo. Colangelo makes these comments about, you know, maturity issues again. And here he is, a guy who has a reputation of maturity. He's clashed with coaches in Sacramento. Certainly he has had some instances in Kentucky, but Jerry Colangelo meets him up, and finally DeMarcus has had enough. He wants to meet with the man face-to-face -face and address those issues, and he did that yesterday. And he definitely voiced those concerns, and he kind of had it out with Jerry. And how would you, I know you talked with DeMarcus after practice, was it a meeting that, that he said he approached him? Because DeMarcus has a lot of different, uh, I guess, ways he can present himself. Did you get the feeling that it was a meeting that was productive but civil, or was he genuinely upset and confronted him and demanded him to know why he was talking about that? It was interesting. You know, he, I think it was definitely productive, and, it, and it, you know, the way the reports have come out, it may have sounded like, things weren't very productive or civil with Jerry Colangelo, that couldn't be more. I mean, that's not true. I mean, DeMarcus said at the end of the, at the, end of the conversation, it was very, very civil, um, and, it was, and it was productive. DeMarcus was upset that, you know, he's never talked to Jerry Colangelo. He says he's never even talked to Coach K for that matter. Um, but his agent, John Gregg, told him that, you know what, leave him alone. Don't, don't go talk to Jerry Colangelo. Leave him alone. Don't talk to him. DeMarcus said he just had to get it off his chest. So I think he went up to him and he said, look, you say I'm immature, give me some reasons. And he said that Jerry couldn't give him any reasons, and then it was just his opinion. And certainly he's entitled to his opinion, as Cousins said, but he couldn't give him any, any reasons. And Cousins is doing so much in his mind to get beyond these maturity issues and get beyond all this reputation stuff that haunts him. And this is just another step back for him. So if you talk to DeMarcus, he thinks it was productive. Jerry Colangelo certainly has, certainly has his opinion. DeMarcus doesn't respect it and thought it was messed up. Now, he talked about, uh, DeMarcus did yesterday when he met with the media, about he didn't want that to be a setback in the steps he's trying to make it to mature as a player. As far as the Sacramento Kings go, they, they played a little bit better after they made a coaching change. DeMarcus played basically almost to an all-star level for a good stretch of the season. How do you think he fits in with Sacramento? Is he, is he a guy that's maturing to where he could be a leader? Certainly he's becoming uh, more of a force on the court, but how do you see him fitting in there long term? Well, you know, if you <laughs> It's definitely a change in mentality. I mean, since Paul Westfall was fired seven games in the last season, um, you know, he was, probably wasn't looked at as like the face of the franchise. Um, the owners, the Malou family, are so high on DeMarcus Cousins. They were actually 
on the forefront of pushing for him to be on this roster and being a part of Team USA. They knew that he could benefit so greatly from it, be it part of the Olympic team or even a select team. They just wanted him to be a part of it. Um, if you ask the Moose family, him right along with Tyree, Ge- Tyree Evans is a part of the face of the franchise. They want to be able to keep room on their books to where they can find this guy long term once they need to. Um, they still look at Tyreek Evans in the same light. Um, some of the management types, depending upon who you talk to candidly, might not have Tyreek Evans in that same light, but certainly DeMarcus Cousins is. So they want him to be the face of the franchise. I don't think they want to be as public about it because of some of those lingering reputation issues. But from a talent standpoint, they look at this man as being the future of big men in the NBA. And I think they think of him in the same light as Dwight Howard, um, somebody that they want to retain not lose, especially for a small market team, you know, they want to be able to keep their own stars, and, and they think he's the budding star of the NBA, and and certainly, you know, DeMarcus has done his share, talent-wise, I mean, productive, productivity-wise on the floor, he's done enough to back that up. Well, if nothing else, DeMarcus is a guy that you can market off the court to. Great personality, great talent. Uh, he will be interesting in Sacramento, maybe with Team USA down the line. Sean Cunningham, thank you very much for joining us. People can follow you on Twitter at News10Sean, and uh, maybe we'll check in with you down the road. I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much.